I hope you're enjoying our 2023 conference where it's all about the human edge. My name is Bill Hewitt, and as the CEO of MindBridge, it's my privilege and a pleasure to introduce Sebastian Stoko, a KPMG partner and their global audit innovation lead. Sebastian is a visionary leader who is helping to shape the future of audit. Based in Berlin, Germany, Sebastian is driving audit innovation across every continent through KPMG's extensive network of over 150 member firms. Sebastian's remarkable journey at KPMG spans over 15 years, during which he's held pivotal roles in audit data and analytics and international initiatives like KPMG Clara, KPMG's global audit platform. His expertise and insights into the future of audit are truly transformative. Please join me in welcoming Sebastian as he shares his wealth of knowledge and KPMG's vision for the future of audit. Sebastian? Well, thank you, Bill, and I hope you can hear me well. Yep. Perfect, wonderful. Well, then uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, uh, wherever you are in the world. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and a big thank you to MindPridge for the invitation. Before I get started, um, let me tell you it's an honor to be here um, to present to you on this agenda. I am humbled by being on the same agenda as Avi uh, Goldfarb, who will speak tomorrow, I believe, whose book I only recently read and uh, it resonated with me a lot. And um, then uh, I realize it's uh, 7 p.m. here in Germany, uh, 1 p.m. at the US um, Eastern Coast, where I believe. Um, um, it's the same time Tim Cook is speaking in, in, at Apple, so I, I can totally understand if um, there are people uh, making different priorities and listening to the future of audit. But nevertheless, if you are um, hanging in with me, I hope uh, you will enjoy the next 35 or so minutes of prepared remarks. And I also look um, for, for engaging with you, getting questions and comments through chat uh, to which I can respond. Yeah, I'll um, spend uh, this uh, first sec section of our slot um, today to try to give you a bit of a glimpse on how we at KPMG see the future of audit evolving, and particularly under the influence and due to the wave of artificial intelligence that's, um, of course, on all of our minds. I firmly believe AI is the industrial revolution of the audit profession. Just like other technologies have led to industrial revolutions in, in respective industries. And if I take it back to Avi and uh, what he writes in his book, um, I think it's important for us as a profession to think how the profession is changing as a whole. He writes, um, the system must adapt, right? The system must adapt to um, the artificial intelligence in, instead of just injecting technology like AI into an existing system. And we think we are doing this and um, I hope you will see that um, after this um, discussion or presentation. So I suggest let's dive right in. And uh, first things first, I hope everybody can see my screen. I'll take you to a quick um, introduction. Who am I and um, uh, who's KPMG and what are we doing? in our global technology organization called KPMG Global Solutions Group. And then I'll take you deeper into um, the vision for the future of audit. So as Bill introduced very kindly, uh, my name is Sebastian Stöckle. I'm based in Berlin, Germany, and I'm a partner with KPMG in Germany. Today, I speak to you in my role as Global Head of Audit Innovation. And in this capacity, I'm responsible for designing and executing or global audit innovation strategy. Yeah, I lead a team of um, both technology specialists and um, audit professionals, so a truly interdisciplinary team at the KPMG Global Solutions Group. And uh, this team is um, in charge of delivering all our global technology assets into our wide network. And many of you will have heard about KPMG Clara. Bill just mentioned it, it's, it's our global smart audit platform. This really comes out of the feather of our organization. Uh, think about KPMG Clara being like a smartphone. Um, it is a platform with an entire ecosystem of applications to support different audit and assurance purposes. On a personal note, um, yeah, I spent the last 17 years with KPMG and I started back in um, implementing 
ERP systems, then auditing ERP systems, followed by years in product development and innovation. I um, pride myself with being um, excited by both business and technology matters at the same time. And I see myself as a translator between both worlds. So bridging the gap uh, between business and technology. And um, in other words, perhaps I um, speak enough audit and IT lingo to be dangerous in both areas. That's on me. Um, many of you know KPMG in and out. Uh, many of you work for KPMG. Um, for those who don't, um, obviously, um, you will have heard about us. We are a, a multidisciplinary firm. Um, audit is one of three functions next to tax and advisory. Um, just in audit, we have about 85,000 professionals all around the world um, delivering audits every single day and working uh, within KPMG Clara to do so. To me, um, the most fascinating part of my job is to think about this complexity, right? Doing audits at a global scale is um, really resulting in us being confronted with um, significant variety, volume, and velocity if I speak in big data terminology. We audit in yeah, nearly every country in the world with every possible language, entities operating in any business model, across any possible industry. It can't be more um, diverse. And at the same time with yeah, significant data complexities. And um, yeah, that, that is for me um, a unique and, and, and fascinating part of, of my job or our job. And yeah, if um, real big data excites you as it does me, don't hesitate to drop me a note if you're looking for, for an exciting job. But enough of that. Let me take you a bit into the details. So in order to think about the future, uh, for me, it's important to understand where we are right now. And uh, I think right now we are in a, a massive phase of changing expectations. It's really a yeah, period of significant change for various reasons. And I'll play the animation through volatility, trust, regulation, and workforce are the mega topics of um, our period that I want to speak to you about in a moment. And to me, they are kind of overshadowed by the trends that are um, dictating a lot of what we do. That is certainly everything around ESG, environmental, social, and governmental risks. And on the other hand, of course, everything around technology and the wave of artificial intelligence I alluded to at the beginning. But let me start from uh, square one, volatility, right? What I, what I mean by that is everything that's happening, happening from a macroeconomic perspective. I think all of you follow news um, and you, you notice that, yeah, economies um, show signs of improvement, but at the same time, there is a, a residual risk, a significant residual risk um, that, that is um, rooted in um, energy prices, that is rooted in um, significant inflation, um, strains on household budgets. There is um, certainly challenges around the world with markets. Um, think about um, the um, decoupling and the whole um, notion around um, an integrated economy with, with China and other emerging countries at, at its heart. There is significant change just simply from this macroeconomic lens. GDP, I just looked up um, at a global level, is projected to be 2.7%, which is um, the lowest annual rate since the global financial crisis in the late uh, 2010s. And um, yeah, with um, you know, with, with, with that, that um, takes me to my home country. Think about Germany, where we are currently expected to be at almost a net zero, perhaps even a recession. Um, um, GDP growth or, or loss for that matter. So all of this is, um, of course, demanding um, trust. And, and that's really the next term I want to speak to you about. So we um, think that our profession as auditors is certainly um, rooted in the, in the necessity of bringing trust to the public interest and to the marketplaces. And um, it is under the circumstances I just described, um, yeah, critically important and perhaps more important than ever. 
Um, the big four, we and, and our competitors um, at the same time must ad adhere to the highest ethical standards. And um, yeah, we must avoid scrutiny, right? That unfortunately also happened in recent times. Think about the Wirecard scandal, again in my home country that really shed a light on our profession and um, also raised um, the importance of the expectation gap I'll speak, to, speak about in a moment. But um, more so also think about what um, happens to um, perhaps uh, malpractices around tax advisory and uh, tax related services um, big force have been delivering in certain jurisdictions. So we must, we must avoid um, uh, risking our trust at the same time as it's as important as bringing trust to the marketplace. And to take you back to the terminology of um, fraud, um, it's I think a widespread um, expectation gap that that auditors are um, expected to detect and prevent fraud, but at the same time, this is primarily a responsibility of company management. Um, as our job as auditors is very much more focused on the materially um, relevant risks in financial statements and um, not at any point um, um, it's it's clear when 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 fraud risks become material, right? So so that about trust um, regulation. Um, everybody knows about what's happening in the um, ESG space. Uh, corporate sustainability um, directive, a uh, reporting directive in the European Union, resulting in a significant amount of um, entities having to disclose uh, sustainability. Um, disclosures, sustainability KPIs, and of course, requiring auditors such as us to, to audit these. But, but this, is, this is just one significant um, element. Think about what's happening in the AI space. Again, in the European Union, lots of um, thinking around um, the so-called EU AI Act that requires entities to um, or businesses to categorize their AI use cases and of course, avoid those most, most riskiest use cases in their, in their every doing. And then again, also requiring um, professional service firms um, and, and auditors in particular to um, support them in, in their process around um, establishing controls and processes over artificial intelligence. And this requires, now it takes me to my next point, new competencies of us, right? So our workforce, um, undergoes a similar change. On one hand, the technology transformation requires us um, to, to rethink our competencies, as I just said, in the AI space is one good example, but more so um, the maybe also macroeconomic factors that are um, impacting the entire workforce um, change. Uh, we talk about uh, generation set, right? Um, I just read recently that the youngest generation of professionals um, will, by 2025, so in two years from now, account for about a quarter of the workforce. And certainly that uh, generation thinks differently about, about work, right? And we must adapt to um, their demands and their um, desires to, to work differently than maybe we have when we started in the profession. And for, for us, that is certainly um, resulting in a significant amount of change, but also for the entities we are auditing. And here again, they need um, credible sparing partners um, that can support them in that process. Yeah, as I said, all of this, um, and I probably could go on and on and on, is, is overshadowed by yeah, the two dominating um, trends and, and factors that are um, in the bottom left and bottom right. So ESG, I just spoke about, it's, it's never more important than now, and um, it's ingraining itself into our societies. And um, certainly it results in um, us as auditors to, to adapt from simple things as uh, delivering um, services to, to the entities we, we provide them to in a, in a more virtual manner, um, being self, more self-conscious about our ESG impact, reducing um, carbon emissions ourselves to obviously um, supporting in both from an advisory perspective, implementing ESG and from an audit and insurance 
perspective, providing that limited and reasonable assurance over the disclosed uh, non-financial or sustainability information. Yeah, and technology, I started with that. Um, the industrial revolution for us, just like maybe the combustion engine or the conveyor belt um, for manufacturing, that is how, how we think about AI. And however, it is not all AI. It is um, certainly much broader and Therefore, let me talk to you for a moment about this um, yeah, very pivotal moment um, for our profession. You see here a whole range of te technologies depicted. I'll speak to some in a moment. Those are front and center for us now, but um, what, what got, got us here is certainly um, a significant amount of technology transformation we have been going through for years now. Yeah, some might say AI is the disruptive moment, in my eyes, it is certainly a transformational moment. It may not be as disruptive as, as one thinks because we have had that same discussion if I look back uh, uh, and think about robotics process automation, data warehousing, um, data analytics, and, and, and nevertheless, the, um, the, the industry and the profession adapted to these technologies and we embrace them fully now. So I, I personally project that similarly also AI is um, leading certainly to a perhaps also faster and accelerated transformation. And um, yeah, so it's very important for us to, to ride that wave and embrace it and, and we do that. So let me um, talk a bit about that. So AI, um, what has happened this year is um, certainly exciting. Think about, um, ChatGPT and what, ha what has resulted from ChatGPT. Microsoft Copilot is one of the um, yes, successors or the um, resulting um, yeah, capabilities from the ChatGPT invention. Very soon, that will mean many, many of us who work with, with Microsoft products every single day will have their AI assistant within their M365 office suite. And, and what that means is AI has been essentially taken out of um, a niche, right? Where data scientists have been focused on and becomes an asset to the average professional. And that's certainly a, transformation, a transformational change that um, I think we don't yet fully comprehend and that will have an impact to the way we work, our clients work um, for, for yeah, the foreseeable future. Another significant element for me here is uh, low code, no code, right? We have been talking about this for years. We have been implementing it for years, mm -hmm. but I feel like the transformational effect is only now really happening. We really truly see now a, what we call democratization of application development, right? A lot more development at the last mile. So at the end of, um, at the end user, at the consumer of technology to overcome um, media gaps, to auto, uh, overcome automation gaps. And uh, for us, it is now a reality and we are pretty excited by um, this capability as it certainly further accelerates our digital transformation. The high entry uh, barrier to data is a significant issue we have dealt with in past years, right? Um, as auditors, and I'll speak more about this later, it's important for us to access, for example, financial accounting information, the general and sub ledgers of the entities we are auditing. This has been complicated for, for decades, but it has gotten a lot more easy in the last few years. And technology is further evolving. Here for me, the cloud is one of the big enablers. As many of the entities we audit um, transform their technology landscape into the cloud. We are with KPMG Clara, for example, cloud native. We have here a unique opportunity or a new opportunity to connect both clouds with each other. And that simplifies and, and automates data transfer to a degree that it really enables a lot of the downstream analytics and AI that is dependent upon this data process to be successful. Yeah, and the last technology I will call out here um, is blockchain. Blockchain, everybody knows it as the technology for cryptocurrencies. And we have uh, seen what has happened to the crypto exchanges and currencies in the last 24 months or so. 
Um, we think blockchain really um, has the potential to provide an, a renaissance, um, another transformation to itself by being an enabler to ESG assurance, right? ESG really requires us to understand how we operate and how our business partners operate and essentially create transparency along entire supply chains. For the entities we ordered, it's important to know how their suppliers, their customers, the suppliers of their suppliers and further nested relationships are um, depicted uh, from an ESG perspective. We call this scope three emissions, the emissions that are happening across entire supply chain, ch chains. And for, for us as, as auditors, it's, it's, um, it's critical to be able to, to understand um, for example, um, carbon emissions across the entire supply chain to provide assurance over um, disclosed KPIs. And so we think that blockchain technology here has that potential and we are, we are very excited about exploiting that further. Maybe it's now a good moment to um, quickly take a look at some questions. I see um, a first question around, um, do you see generative AI like ChatGPT as a place in audit and especially in view of trust in the workforce. Yes, we, we most certainly do. And I will in a moment elaborate in greater detail. Um, so maybe bear with me for one more moment. Then second, have you had success in attracting this younger work workforce? I think so, yes. I mean, I think that um, transforming the way we deliver services to clients and how we appear in the public as a technology-oriented organization as a technology leader is certainly attractive to the younger workforce. And nobody wants to um, tick and tie financial statements, uh, sample lots of transactions, and follow up transactions that are perhaps not even high risk. So we think the technology change, and I'll talk to, to this in a little bit, is certainly a big attractor to um, young professionals. And the last one, why did KPMG opt for Mindbridge as their platform choice instead of developing an in-house solution? I'll speak more about later. Which really is um, a good setup uh, for me to continue because um, it's important to uh, look um, beyond um, what, what, what just we do. Certainly, um, the entire profession is investing, right? So what I, I put on the slide here for you is to provide you a bit of an overview of what's happening in the entire world of um, accounting firms. I've focused here on, on the big fours. Everybody's investing. Um, clearly visible also partnering is a critical success factor, whether with Microsoft or, or other big tech firms, with Mindbridge, of course, for us in our case. And um, I think, and that maybe speaks also already to the third question here in the chat, um, it's important to make smart make or buy decisions. and. We try to, to partner with the right companies to um, make that decision in a smart way, combine our auditing, accounting, industry knowledge with technology expertise in the right manner. And yeah, that is important because um, we want to certainly scale technology, not have this be a, a niche solution or have technology be a niche solution, but um, do what we do as globally consistently, and I'll speak to that also in a little while. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited by our strategy at KPMG, and that leads me also to the next slide. We um, um, have certainly partnered with um, hyperscalers like Microsoft, and um, many of you will have heard about the investment we have um, just this year expanded to really focus in on AI and, and other transformative technology. But equally as important is um, for me the partnership with Mindbridge, and I'll dive a bit further into this now. So uh, on this slide, you will see we have um, tried to focus in on what, what, what is the foundational imperative behind the investments we are making or the strategic imperative. Essentially, we have four surrounding that infinity symbol. Cloud, I spoke about, right? It's paramount to um, leverage the latest cloud technology for things like I spoke about access to, uh, to data, to 
um, improve accessibility to data, to make data transfer more seamless, but also to um, have access to technologies that can be scaled in cloud environments better than um, anywhere else. I mean, many of you are technologists. I don't have to tell you this, but um, for us, that's certainly an imperative we are now living. Um, the second point here is um, enhanced risk fo focus. So what that means for, for us is everything we do is we want to focus in with technology or we want to leverage technology to allow us to focus in on areas of the audit with real risk and at the same time avoid um, spending time in areas where there's really little to low risk. So very much risk-based, exception-based audit and I come to that a little later too. The next point here is artificial intelligence. Not surprising, our principle is AI by design, right? So everything we do is looked at from the lens of how can we design this from an, from an AI, perspective, AI perspective? And important for us here is to find the right, right relationship between human and machine. So machine to human um, approach to designing and integrating AI into what we do. Yeah, and lastly, and that takes me to empowered people at the end, right? Um, the technology is not, not here for itself, but to increase value, increase audit quality, um, improve the client experience and deliver new insights perhaps we couldn't have obtained otherwise in the past. Yeah, and uh, all of this is framed by our three principles, standardization, automation, and centralization. And, and what that essentially means is um, we do hundreds of thousands of audits across the world. When we do a single audit procedure, let's take an example of testing, testing the um, existence or accuracy of revenue for corporate entities. Uh, we perform an audit procedure. We want this procedure to be globally consistent. That's standardization. We want it to be automated or enabled through automation, right? So here's where certainly the AI and the technology comes in. Yeah, and then we want central execution wherever practical and possible, right? To take the routine um, work out of our engagement teams, out of the professionals that are um, focused on the more judgmental, more complex areas of the audit and um, perform more audit procedures centrally. So that's that's in, in essence how we how we approach our um, strategy. And why do we do this? So um, if we look a little bit back, um, I'll have two pictures for you. So the first one here is um, a bit comical. You might need to um, um, spend a few seconds to really understand it. But it really speaks to what we call risk assessment, right? In order to assess risks, um, perhaps in the past, we would have done that at higher levels of aggregate. Um, we would um, not necessarily have had um, without technology the ability to identify really the areas of the audit where there is um, significant risk. And we perhaps would have spent in the past um, effort in areas where it wasn't as necessary as in others. So taking a um, too small, um, too aggregated lens of the reality as in this picture shown. And then in the second step following thereafter, so um, the um, response to identified risks, we perhaps would have um, searched for errors on a sample by sample basis. Right, essentially a random monetary sample approach that would have held the bucket into the river and pull out the sample is um, certainly a statistically applicable approach, but it's not the approach of highest audit quality. And in a lot of ways, and that also will take me in a moment to our relationship with Mindbridge, this approach has changed and we have moved away from this, um, yeah, perhaps aggregated risk assessment view of reality and the sample-based response to testing specific risks. So today, um, this is how it looks like, right? We essentially take a 100% snapshot of reality as it is, right? Without cutting any corners. If that means, um, 
understanding and assessing the entity's entire general ledger or sub ledger, um, then this is what we do. And we then apply technology, also the mind bridge technology, to filter to those areas or to filter out those areas of the business that are really behaving very normal with um, a high likelihood of being free of errors to allow us as the funnel gets smaller to focus in what really matters. And that by definition takes us um, from yeah, the entire audit scope to the areas where there is high risk and um, allows us to focus on those yeah, true outliers, true exceptions. The numbers in the center are, of course, um, an example, but picture a ledger of hundreds of thousands or maybe even hundreds of millions of transactions. This is how the funnel works. Yeah? And it works um, very well uh, for different types of risks. Um, I spoke about the risk of existence and accuracy of revenue, but um, I could equally look at other risks, risk of fraud um, as another example. And how do we do this? We do this um, very much through AI. And the picture here is, I think, how all of us have been used to AI for many years. Um, the broad definition is, right, AI is everything that performs at or above human level, which um, counts in NLP, ML, um, deep learning, neural networks, and now, of course, the new large language models, um, new, I should say, but uh, the ones that have gotten significant attention this year. Now, this is, of course, a very technical lens on artificial intelligence. And um, for us, though, we look at it quite, quite different because um, really important is um, how can we use AI in an audit context? And the diagram that, that you see here really depicts two extremes of, of a spectrum. On the right-hand side, we have artificial intelligence uh, situated that is more or less what we call autopiloting, right? It takes us from an analysis result more or less directly to audit evidence. This is certainly a space where, where Mindbridge plays um, and uh, it's, it's very, very um, applicable because um, it's interpretable, it's explainable, um, it can be reperformed, it's transparent. So it ticks a lot of boxes we need to tick following the auditing standards um, in order to um, use technology as audit procedures. Of, on the left-hand side of the spectrum, is the other extreme, co-piloting. We really reused the term Microsoft has born with, with their co-pilot, but this whole notion of having a smart virtual assistant that helps us in our daily work, that can summarize text for us, but perhaps also be a better um, assistant, we can search information we, we need with. Um, this is situated in that space. And certainly that's something that doesn't necessarily directly lead us to audit evidence, right? It is technology that um, assists us in what we do, but it really, really requires the human in the loop. Uh, those large language models are not explainable or transparent, right? We cannot easily reperform what they are doing. And so this is how we have organized around AI. And um, there are certainly um, steps in between those two extremes that can be filled with the different technologies um, you saw on the prior slide, NLP, other types of machine learning, and deep learning, neural networks, all the way then to the left-hand side where the LLMs would be situated. So, um, that takes me to um, the second last slide, I believe. Just want to underscore our, our relationship with Mindbridge. That is um, also one of the questions that um, I received earlier. So for us, certainly the power of um, working together comes from having very robust, very capable technology and being able for us to pair that with our auditing, accounting, industry knowledge. And the result is an applicable solution for different types of, of procedures. 
in, in essence, um, yes, as it says here, there is a um, capability now that can cover 100% of transactions of entities ledgers that gives us um, insights in, in ways um, we, we couldn't have obtained it in the past. Um, doesn't mean it's the only tool or only solution that we apply, but it is complementing in areas where we found um, it to be valuable. It gets us to really fully embrace this um, risk-based, um, exception-based, outlier-based audit I spoke about. And um, just like other solutions really plays in this, in this ball game. Yeah, and at the end for us, um, that means quality and efficiency. Quality, because we step away from samples, right? And we apply procedures to 100% of the population. And efficiency more for the clients um, than for us. But um, when we engage with the entities we audit, we um, can focus the discussion on transactions that matter. And uh, those follow ups are not based on, on random samples. So before I go um, and answer a few more questions, I want to leave you with this last slide here. Um, we have certainly made available lots of thought leadership publicly. And um, there is a QR code on this uh, slide, which you can scan that will take you to our website, where you can find lots of materials around different technologies, emerging technologies, um, how they fit within an audit and insurance context, what innovation means for us, how we partner with MindPridge, Microsoft, and others, and um, yeah, um, also showcasing um, leaders in the KPMG network who um, are specializing in different areas and, and really bring together that, that wealth of knowledge um, as it relates to innovation technology and audit. So that takes me. Um, to the end, I um, would take the opportunity to answer a few questions that I haven't answered yet. I think some I did. So let me scroll through. How do we use MindPridge? I do think we, we cover this. Uh, for, for us, MindPridge fits, uh, maybe I didn't say that as clearly yet, both in the risk assessment as well as um, into the substantive testing space. We call it a concurrent procedure, right? It, it, it lives in both worlds. And um, with, with, with that, we certainly um, um, believe we are among the first movers in our industry and we, we drive the professions and the regulators to um, embrace that principle. Another question, applicability across engagement. So that's a very good question. We um, it takes me back to the beginning. Um, I spoke about big data variety, volume, and velocity, right? So the complexity of doing audits um, all around the world in all industries, all languages, all business models also means the risks we are looking for um, and the risks we are auditing are very, very diverse. Yeah? And there's not a single solution um, or a single technology that addresses our risks, right? Uh, that at least doesn't exist now and won't exist for a long time. So when I, when I said KPMG Clara is like a smartphone, it consists of various applications. That is really what I mean by that. It, um, we, we have apps and um, solutions for different risks that we can apply very, very targeted, depending on what we ordered, who we ordered, where in the world. The regulators, um, well, I think the regulators are very, um, um, very much aware of the technology transformation. They are very interested. Maybe some of you are uh, regulators listening in right now, and we're having very, very good discussions as it relates to artificial intelligence or, or other emerging technologies and their role in an audit. All of this is new. It's uh, it's new for for us. It's it's new for the regulators but we learn every single day. And um, certainly before using technology on audits, um, we have to go through the process to make sure that um, they um, are performing at the level they are designed to perform, um, that they are operating effectively. 
And we are doing this um, as part of our normal um, audit tool and software audit tool processes. Yeah, centralization. Um, I think centralization is a, is a very broad term, right? I spoke to an example on um, uh, for, for, for us, but um, for, for me, more broadly spoken, this means we, um, we specialize, right, a lot in what we do. And um, having centers of excellence, having shared delivery centers that are specialized in something, being at AI or other technologies for specific audit purposes, is key to rapidly scale the adoption. And, and that's how we look at, at centralization. Convince uh, clients to give you data. So data privacy is, is paramount, right? So whatever we do um, is um, certainly under the most strict and robust uh, data privacy, data protection mechanisms we can establish, right? So um, we have um, the, the, the right um, safeguards in place, the right controls in place, and we have certainly um, respective um, transparency into what we do with um, the most um, confidential information we need um, to fulfill our purpose as auditors. Trust in co-piloting. Um, well, it's new, right? It's very new. <laughs> I think for many of, of us, it, um, it, it will be a process to trust um, the core pilots. And I think a big, big part will be just proving that it works. Um, if it's quicker and reliable to find information, then um, core piloting is going to be uh, successful. And you know, ways to, to have put checks and balances in Many of you know ChatGPT has citations. So citations, I think, play, play a big role, ensuring that the information that is being produced by an LLM is really um, allowing a tieback, a reconciliation to the source. I think that that transparency goes a long way in um, fostering change management. Client adoption for um, technology such as MindBridge. I think um, just like, like most technologies, um, they are very um, very much applicable across the board, right? Whether you do an external audit or an internal audit, many of the technologies can be very similar in essence. And so I, I think there's uh, yeah, significant value and, and that's what we um, see with our clients in uh, using technology also like MindBridge whether for an internal audit or an external audit purpose. Process risk analytics. So um, we, we are very focused on, on both um, channel ledger and sub ledger analytics, um, also with MindBridge. So, so yes, we are, we are looking into, into that or we, we are using that. It was a short question. Expectation gap comment you made about Wirecard. So essentially the comment I made was around uh, the expectation gap of detecting and um, uh, preventing fraud, which is not necessarily the mandate for us as auditors. Forensic specialists, yes, they have that mandate, but they are being appointed by client management or um, supervisory boards. And uh, so, that, that, that is that is typically the expectation gap. We've seen that with Wirecard, but but also with other recent big frauds that um, certainly also in the media and rightfully so, understandably, um, there is um, a big question mark, why did the auditor um, uh, not, not identify the fraud? And so for us, it's important to um, um, not even be too focused on that discussion. We spend a lot of our energy on um, 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 focusing on um, assessing fraud risks. And so also as part of an audit, um, assessing the risk of fraud and using technology and in particular AI to do so is a um, yeah, significant um, element and um, we, we focus on that. And in fact, if you use the QR code here, um, you will 
get um, to a website where we have a number of blocks. And one of the blocks is, um, I think it's even um, um, a, a podcast on fraud and using technology to um, assess fraud risks quicker, um, earlier. And if you're interested to understand more in this, please don't hesitate to um, yeah, listen in. Yeah, so impact to, to people, right? Um, um, through the introduction of technology. I mean, I spoke a bit to this. It, for me, is on one hand, uh, certainly a enabler to attracting talent. Um, I spoke to that. Then, of course, for us, it's important to make sure our professionals uh, can keep up with the technology transformation. So training is of the essence. We are investing a lot in, in training our people in AI, in responsible AI, in ethics related to AI, algorithm bias, um, topics like that. But, but then it's also important to create these centers of excellence I spoke about. So identifying those um, specialists, uh, lighthouses, um, um, communities that are um, able to go at, at higher speeds and essentially pull the entire organization behind them. Champions was the word I was looking for. So um, we spent a lot of time on that as well. And yeah, um, hiring is another element. Clearly, we are um, a multidisciplinary firm and therefore have a broad range of competencies we are hiring. We have, um, fortunately, within our employees, but we are also expanding as we need to focus more on um, yeah, keeping up with, with emerging technologies. So I hope I hope that was uh, helpful, um, and I would say with that um, let's close. Um, I want to thank everybody for for attending. I hope you join me in agreeing that we have exciting times ahead of us, and uh, the future is bright. Thanks everyone, and have a wonderful day.